Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new air compressor from Air Venturi, the Nomad 2. So we have the Nomad 2 here today. Now there is an original Nomad and that's a, a separate unit. So uh, that unit is a little bit smaller than this and has a separate power supply. Um, nice little unit sold out very, very quickly, um, announced earlier this year, and the Nomad 2 really followed it up almost right away. So a little bit more expensive, but this is an all-in-one unit. So your power supply as well as the compressor itself is all housed in this unit. Comes with a nice carrying case, and let's show you guys all the accessories. The whole thing comes in this nice carrying case uh, inside of a really durable box with foam and all that, which is really cool, nicely packaged. Uh, fits in here perfectly. It comes with like a carry strap as well. So you have the, the handles here uh, and then you can actually attach this carry strap also depending on how you want to carry it. It'll work however you want. We have our car battery hookups here. Uh, so you have your kind of jumper cable setups uh, which plug right into the side of the compressor here. So that'll go in like that. Pretty simple setup. This is all detailed in the manual as well, guys. So something to keep in mind. This is definitely something you're going to want to read the manual on before you go ahead and start playing with stuff. Uh, of course, you will have your power converter three prong wall outlet for those 110 users out there. This unit is actually capable of being used with a 220 volt outlet as well. You will need an adapter or a separate cord, so keep that in mind. Uh, and the user manual also details how to remove the cover and change it over from 110 to 220. Next up, we have our filter and our hose assembly. Now this guy just plugs right into the front of the unit. Very simply, I have uh, two quick disconnects on both sides. Slips right on and you are good to go. This is the proper orientation for this. Uh, and the filter unit actually unscrews and you get some extra filter inserts as well. So these are just, you know, your typical cartridge cotton style filter uh, that'll catch any of that bulk moisture or anything like that that's coming through the unit. Uh, and these need to re be replaced every so often. I think it said like an hour or two of use, which depending on what you're filling, may be a long time or may not be very much time at all. So something to keep in mind, probably wanna keep track of how long your runs are with this guy. Next thing out of the bag is a full parts kit basically. So uh, you have some foot extensions if you wanna sit the feet up a little higher, it looks like, uh, as well as a dead head. I'll go ahead and pull that out. And you got a ton of O-rings, springs, seals, stuff like that in here. Uh, looks like another few as well so you got pretty much all the extra parts you are going to need right in the bag here and you will also get a little oiling bottle now you don't have to use this uh, but you are going to need silicone oil of some kind whether that's like crossman silicone oil or the umarex spring cylinder oil uh, any pure silicone oil will work you can get it at local hardware stores as well all right so now that we've looked at the accessories let's look over the unit itself tell you what's going on here so on the front side you will see this is actually what houses your burst disc so a little safety burst there uh, probably set around 5,000 psi i'm hoping we don't find out today uh, but you do have replacement burst discs in the kit the parts kit that comes with this as well uh, you have your quick disconnect so this is your output so a male fitting on the output which as we showed you connects right to the hose filter setup and then you have your main bleed valve so obviously clockwise to tighten counterclockwise to bleed everything out uh, the Nomad 2 is different than the one in another way as well, and this is kind of an internal safety feature. Once you fill your gun or uh, whether you're filling a small separate bottle, whatever you're filling with this unit, once you stop, you're not able to restart and continue. So the uh, on-off kind of power supply, I guess, is, is tied directly to the bleeder. So you will actually have to bleed the pressure in the unit to go ahead and restart and maybe fill again, or if you wanted to top it back up, you are gonna have to bleed the unit. So keep that in mind. So on on the top of the unit here we have our pressure gauge right here which reads in both PSI and bar so that's pretty easy to use. Uh, you also have your kind of adjustment dial here that's going to allow you to set your pressure. This does have an automatic stop or shut off to it so if you set it to 3000 PSI once it gets to 3000 PSI in whatever you're filling it's going to shut off which is a really nice feature. You have your load gauge as well. Now what the load is actually measuring I'm not sure if it's amperage or something else. Uh, but basically this is uh, how, what tells you how often to oil the unit uh, as well as how 
hard the unit is working. So we'll show you where to oil in a minute, but if you want to make sure this is always reading below like 28 or 29. Uh, if it goes over that, it will shut off on its own. So another safety feature built in. You also have your on off switch and your power or reset switch. So your power switch is actually going to control the flow of electricity. So once you go ahead and plug this into a wall outlet or even into your car battery, uh, you're going to hear the fan inside of the power inverter or the converter uh, running. Once you hit that power button, then the compressor fans are going to kick on and this thing's going to get a little bit louder. Once you hit the on button, that's when it starts to fill. Now you can hit that off button at any time, but again, as I said before, you're going to need to bleed the unit if you want to go ahead and restart your fill if you cut it off early. Now also on top of the unit, you have a nice little handle here. We'll go ahead and turn the unit around. Now you'll notice that we have our power cord uh, installation part right here. We have a fuse right here, which it does come with a replacement fuse, which is nice. Uh, and then we also have where you plug in the jumper cable hookup here once you go to the car battery setup, if that's how you want to run the unit. Flipping it over here, you will see this nice little note here. Now what that's telling you, you turn this guy on its side, you have a second kind of moisture release here. That's what they call it, a moisture release valve. Now this doesn't need to be opened, but every 15, 20 fills they say in the manual. So this is basically going to purge the secondary filtration system uh, inside of the unit. So again, you don't have to do it very often, every 15, 20 fills or so, and you're gonna be good to go. That's just a standard bleeder like the one on the front is. And also on the bottom, we do have a light board. So kind of a neat little upgrade feature, I guess. I'm not really sure if it's going to be super useful yet, but this actually has an LED light panel on the bottom, uh, blue LED lights. So if you're running this guy at night or something, it'll give you a little bit extra light, I guess. Um, so kind of a cool little feature, I suppose. And then turning it over to this side here, obviously we have our fan. You want to make sure this is uncovered at all times because this is what cools the unit. It is fan cooled. And then we also have our oiling hole. So you are going to want to make sure you know where that is because every couple of fills, it's recommended that you go ahead and give it a couple of drops of silicone oil to keep the system lubricated. So uh, that's basically a rundown of the unit. Let's go see how she works. So first things first, when it comes to operating the Nomad 2, we are going to plug this guy into an active outlet. So we are going to run it here on 110. Go ahead, put the plug in. Now you hear that whirring, that's what I was talking about. The inverter itself is actually that fan inside the inverter is going, uh, and that has a vent right here. Also something you don't wanna cover just like the fan on the opposite side over here. Next step, we are going to plug in our hose. And just for testing purposes, before we go ahead and fill everything, I like to make sure everything's operating properly. You can do that by using this test plug. You plug the end of the hose here, that's all good. And now we can go ahead and turn the unit on. So I hit that power button. And now you hear it come to life, guys. So that is that fan over there. That's all the noise that this thing's making right now. What you can do once the power is on as well, you can also toggle the light on the bottom of it. We're gonna leave it off. We don't need it here now. So now that I have the hose plugged, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to right about 3,000 PSI. What we're gonna wanna make sure that we're watching here is that that load gauge stays relatively low, we're building pressure consistently, and the auto shutoff is working. Wouldn't wanna attach it straight to a gun without knowing those things are operational. So let's see what happens. So we go ahead to press the on off button. Now you can hear the compressor run in here and we'll see it slowly start to build on the load gauge here again. We're gonna expect it to hover in that like low 20s area for most of your use. You can already see it's building pressure pretty quickly here doing a good job. Awesome, there you go. So we're at 3000 PSI right now. It just shut off all on its own. Really easy to do. Now all we'd have to do is go ahead and bleed our line. And then we just go ahead, turn the unit off like that. You'll still hear that whirring of the inverter. Uh, but other than that, we're good to go. Now let's hook it up to a gun and see what happens. All right, so the gun we have to fill today, the brand new 25 caliber Umarex Gauntlet just came in. So we are gonna put some air in it so I can go shoot it and test it out. 
very simple since we have a quick disconnect fitting on the uh, other side of the bottle on the gun. This is about a 200 cc bottle, so should take like seven or eight minutes uh, to go from zero to full. 3000 PSI and you'll notice looking at the gauge on the other side we are at zero so that's all good to go. I'm just going to rest the gun on its side there. Make sure our bleed valves are closed. One on the bottom too. Good to go. I'm going to power this guy on and here we go. Wow. All right, now that we've started to build pressure, we'll see you in a few minutes. All right. Looks like just over six minutes, guys, and we are at 3,000 PSI on this gauge. No, it looks like just a little over. That's gonna come down though, guys. Keep in mind, this is a little warm right now, so that's gonna cool off. All you have to do now, very simple, just go ahead, bleed the pressure. Good to go. I can go ahead and power it off at this time. Disconnect my hose, and we are all set to go shoot. Uh, very easy to use with the Nomad 2. Pretty impressive running so far. All right guys, so you wanna run this off your car battery, pretty simple. Positive end goes on the positive terminal, negative end, black handles go on the negative terminal. Once you're hooked up, you go ahead, plug it in. Make sure she's plugged all the way in. Now, normally you'd probably wanna start your car battery. We're just gonna be backfilling the hose here, so no big deal. So we power it on here. Hear everything come to life. And we're good to go. All right guys, so running it off your car battery, very simple. Go ahead, bleed it out once you're done, fill into whatever pressure you need to. Good to go. Let's head back inside. All right guys, so a couple points to discuss before we close this video out today on the Nomad 2. Uh, number one, this unit is capable of going up to 4,500 PSI in terms of fill pressure. So uh, your Adamin, stuff like that, no problem to fill those guns, which is a really nice thing as well. Obviously, they're gonna take a little bit longer with that higher pressure. Uh, second point, you are not supposed to be filling big tanks with these. Uh, really, anything that's on board of your gun, you can fill with this unit. Uh, anything larger than that, though, your 88 cubic inch tanks or even, you know, 45 cubic foot bottle, things like that, that is not meant for this unit. Now, could you do it in small spurts, you know, 10 to 15 minute intervals, something like that? Sure, it's probably possible, but again, you don't want to go over that really 15 minute fill time with this unit. That's going to put too much strain on this guy and is actually called out as uh, something they won't honor the warranty on in the manual. So something to keep in mind there, guys. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You know, you did it. You filled with it once. Well, actually, guys, we got this unit in advance. So full disclosure, we've been running this for a little bit now. Um, we've put probably about five hours on this unit. So keep in mind, you know, you're filling a 200 cc cylinder on the gauntlet, you know, for six minutes. Five hours is a lot of time for this guy. You know, you change the filter, you keep it lubricated. And this thing certainly, at least in our testing, has had the lifespan uh, to keep it going. So this is a really, really great fill option for those of you that are, you know, maybe far away from a fill source, you know, if you're out of town or something like that, or you want the portability of being able to run this at your shooting location off of your car battery, uh, this Nomad 2 is a very, very cool unit and definitely one you should take a look at if it meets your needs in those regards. So uh, for the Insider Guys, I'm Tyler Patner. We appreciate you joining us today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as always. We'll see you next time.